Okay, we'll look at a couple of applications that we used in both Excel and MATLAB to solve uh, linear interpolation and numerical integration. So looking at linear interpolation first, when we looked at lookup tables, we looked at uh, the population of a given town uh, on 10 year intervals. And so what we'd really like to do is uh, get a better estimate of what happened between those 10 years. So with linear interpolation, we make the assumption that the data varies linearly between the data points. So we want to find the uh, value of the population at year X. So that falls between years X1 and X2. The corresponding values for X1 and X2 are Y1 and Y2. and We're trying to find that value of Y that corresponds to X. So we look at sim similar triangles here. And uh, there you see the formulas. Um, excuse me, height over base is consistent for both of those. And so we solve that for the value of Y and get this formula. Now let's go back to our population example. We'll suppose we want to find the population, or estimate the population rather, in 1956. We know that the population in 1950 and 1960 are the values that are shown there. There's our formula. So we plug in the, all the known values, x, x1, x2, y1, y2, and solve for y. That number comes out to be 3656. As you expect, it's somewhere between 3012 and 4086. Here's a similar one. Let's look at 1988. In 1980, the population was 7478. In 1990, it was a little over 10,000. So plugging those values in and round it off to the nearest integer, we estimate that the population in 1988 was 9,585. Now, you don't really have to memorize that formula. Think about it this way. Let's look at the logic here. From 1980 to 1990, we had a population increase of 2,634. Now again, what we're assuming is that increase happens linearly. So from 1980 to 1988, that's 80% of the period where that population change took place. So if I simply multiply 0 0.8 times the population change, and I apologize, that should be 2634 right there, we come up with the population that the population growth that took place during those eight years which is estimated as 2107 then we simply add that to the population in 1980 and come up with our estimate 9585 so again thinking of it that way and looking at the percentage uh, within uh, within an interval uh, means you don't really have to memorize a formula Okay, let's talk about numerical integration now. So one thing that's important to remember here is that an integral is simply the area under a curve. And so we can approximate a definite integral, that is for uh, given endpoints, we can approximate the value of the integral with this numerical approach. So let's look at a, a given formula here that we want to integrate from the from lower limit of 0 to the upper limit of 4. The exact answer to this is 16 units. Now, we want to estimate that with numerical integration. So the first thing is we divide this into increments, and then we assume, just like linear interpolation, we make an assumption that, um, or an approximation, that y1 and y2 are connected by a straight line. That forms a trapezoid, which is why our uh, method here is called the trapezoid rule or trapezoid method. The area of the trapezoid is simply the average height, so one half y1 plus y2, times the base, which is x2 minus x1. So when we look at uh, our example here, now there are five endpoints from 0 to 4, so that means we're going to divide this into four equal intervals, each of those one unit wide. And so we calculate the areas, add them all up, and the sum comes up to 18. Now we know the exact answer here is 16. So what we can see is that uh, where we're, we have negative areas to begin with, we underestimate the negative area. The positive areas we actually overestimate, so those errors tend to, uh, to add up in this case. 
Now, of course, we can get a better answer by using more intervals. So in this case, instead of every one, we looked at every, every half unit, which means that we have eight intervals and nine endpoints. And when we add these up, we come a lot closer to our uh, known exact answer of 16. Our answer now is 16.5. So how do we know if we used enough intervals? Now, again, in this simple example, well, we already knew the exact answer. But most of the time, if we're doing this, we don't know what the exact answer is. So what we do is keep trying more intervals until you see that the change in the solution from one trial to the next is, uh, is minimal. In other words, when you converge to a value. That makes MATLAB the best tool for this, because we can write a uh, MATLAB script that prompts us for the number of intervals, keep running that script with more and more intervals, and we'll see where it converges to a solution, which is a little more cumbersome to do in Excel. So to summarize here for numerical integration, that we can really easily estimate the value of any definite integral with this method. It's especially useful for cases where you don't know the analytic solution, where you analytic solution is kind of complicated, so you want to check it, and where you have measured data points instead of an equation. Then uh, instead of trying to fit an equation to those measured data points, you can just use integration directly on those measured points. Also, there are other uh, methods of doing this that converge to a solution faster, but we prefer to use the trapezoids because, first of all, it's really easy to remember the equation for the area of a trapezoid. And with modern computers, you can do 10,000, 100,000 intervals uh, with, in essentially zero time.